What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. I think we just gained two new friends. This was the chattiest we've been. This yeah. Was like, it was a really good conversation. We, we didn't officially ever start the episode. We just kind of recorded the whole thing, rolled into it. Jordan Ramirez and his wife, Danny Austin. Yes. What a treat. What a treat. We have so many parallels to our lives. We both live in the influencing world, kind of found ourselves there. Is that the only parallel? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're they're way cooler than we are. They are way cooler There's than we are. There's not a lot of parallels. We, learned, <laughs> we learned so much about them, how they operate, oh, how man. they um, work together, live together, parent together, do all of their things together, and how they kind of find the boundaries to make that all a success. This episode was the first time Jordan and I met, and we almost went on a trip to New York together and two weeks after, and I was like, yeah, this makes sense. I know this guy. He could He could hang. Yeah. Uh, but Jordan and Danny do a lot. They have a company called Divi, mm -hmm. which is uh, a hair health company. It's fantastic. You've probably heard of it. you probably Wildly seen it. Wildly successful. They're really successful. They also have a podcast, mm -hmm. De-Influenced. Um, they also have YouTube. They have social media. They're busy. On every platform. Busy, busy, busy bees. Yeah. They're all over the place. They also have two babies. And I think you're going to like this conversation. I learned a lot. Um we, we had a lot of laughs as yeah. well, so I think you'll enjoy it. We talked about their approach with the whole cancel culture and controversy yeah. when it comes to opinions and being so front-facing on social media platforms. Yeah, um, yeah we kind of tackled it all. It was a good conversation. It was. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to find out more about Jordan and Danny, we'll link their information down below. Without further ado, Jordan Ramirez and Danny Austin. Is this your home or office? So this room has like transitioned from being playroom yep. and it went back to like a conference room. Now it's podcast studio slash, so it's playroom. slash playroom slash workout room. So it's just kind of like, oh, that's yeah. really, that's a good idea to just, cause I like the homey feeling, yeah. Yeah. homey vibe, um, instead of getting like an office space or something. Right. So that's, that's a good idea. It's very hard to, to be a parent and then also like, try to yep. be managing yep. the team or like it, it, so we were like let's try to do separation but yeah yeah anyway that's so smart Preach. yeah no we i think we're in the phase right now of like trying to figure that out i feel like i'm Guys, sure what a like treat it's like the uh marriage too yeah has it helped the marriage yes a lot <laughs> a lot because i was like i just need quiet i need space i need my own place to go you're the same literally person. This yeah. person right literally, here. Literally, I was in, I was crying in bed, saying the same exact thing last night. I'm like, I have not been alone by myself. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, it, there's always people in and, in and out of our house. Yeah. Always. And then he's the guy who could like work 24 seven. And I was yeah. like, if you're gonna work, you need an office and you need to go somewhere because when you come home, we're home and we're done. I've been meaning to tell you, I'm less like that now. I've been really proud of you. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we're like the same person like I yeah. just, last year uh like the work 24 7 because we like launched divi last year and this year i've been like really working hard on not being that and like okay five is when we you know transition from not working to this but it's like weird because what what we all do is so 24 7 if you let it be and so the conversation we had last night was just like boundaries and having to redefine those boundaries as our kids get older when they were newborns it's kind of a different thing because yeah. they sleep so much but yeah. stella our daughter is starting to really like understand what's going on and mm -hmm. she like knows the you know team members names and stuff and it's just like it's not bad it's just like do we want to condition her yeah. to know home as like a work environment does that mm -hmm. make sense yeah so. we were literally talking about that last night but like Jordan, I didn't see him at all last year. He was so busy, worked 24 seven. And then now I feel like he's like, you were saying, you're like, I'm not like that anymore. Like he's yeah. like on the weekends, like we can actually do, like he plays paintball on the weekends. And like yeah. we have you our weekends. Paintball? Oh, wait, what? That's like a hobby? I'm, you, listen, I'm not a golf guy. I'm a paintball guy. And you've got to come because it's the most fun you'll ever have. Every Saturday. He's like so into it. He has like all his gear. He's like his backpack. He got this like new helmet with the new goggles. I am so Whoa. handedly driving the sport of paintball. And you can be a part of it if you want to come. Wait, Danny, how are you in? No, I haven't got it. I'm scared because he comes home and he has these welts that are like yeah. huge. They're huge. One time he, um, we actually went to Austin for like, this like networking event. And the day before we left, he got hit. It was like 
right here in the middle yeah, of his yeah. forehead like just like such a kill shot and like he had this huge like well on his forehead at this dinner i ended up i was like babe you have to like put concealer on like i like was in there trying to cover it up i was like um, should i i was like should i maybe just like use it as a conversation starter but it, it looked weird so we we covered it up it looked like it looked like he like intentionally put something like right i don't know wow. so um so yeah, he's really into paintball now. Most most husbands are like, "Hey, do you golf?" I'm like, "No, but my husband paintballs." But like, I feel like they always love that. They yeah, like, they always end up coming. I'm telling you, you'll have the most fun you'll ever have. Are you a what? golfer? No, no. So because that's not the phase of life. Like, who has time? What are we doing? I'm not gonna go off for five hours. Like, what? So I I'll know. go paintball. Go for get sure. your aggression out Wait, and paintballing. Jordan, so check this out. I got a thing I'm doing this year. One competition a month. All right, and yeah. like. Last night, I didn't tell you this yet either. I signed up for a go-kart race, which I'm hyped about. But I don't know, like a competition might be a strong word for paintball, but I do want to come maybe in June or July for a yes. Saturday and just like run it. Oh no, I got some friends up in Nashville that wanted to, they've been wanting to play too. So I'll come up to you and we can go in the Nashville right. area. Have you ever played Civil War style paintball, oh, Jordan? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, no, I, it's it's not my thing, you know. Like I, I, they do this thing on if you go to paintball on your birthday, they do this thing where you have to take your shirt off, and they call it the white rabbit, and you have to. They line everyone in your birthday party up against you, and you have to sprint down a, a fifty yard line. Absolutely not. The entire time. I'm in. So that's that's really turned me away from Civil War paintball, but we can try it together. I mean, do you know the Civil War style paintball? Do you know what we're talking about? Okay, so you know, in the Civil War back in the old days, they used to literally just fight in lines, right? And so this is what we're replicating: is you have one team standing facing the other, and you have to alternate taking shots. So one at a time, you just Dude, every, it's but crazy. then every it's shot so you get to take a step closer. Yeah, you have to and you have to just stand there <laughs> helpless and let the team shoot you. That would be a really bit. fun double date, to be honest. Think Hold about on. it. <laughs> We're going on a deep, dark paintball tangent here real quick. I do yeah. have one paintball story for you guys, which I think will help you appreciate our relationship <laughs> even more. That, you forgot oh, so you about this? Yeah, I don't think about this. When we were either. dating, I remember I had like, I had told Andrew something when we were dating that really like pissed him off. Like for better or for worse, it had pissed him off. And he took it like a champ. He was like, okay. You know, I'm just going to digest this information. Thank you for telling me. And then I don't hear from him. He goes off to football practice and he calls me like later that night. And he's like, hey, babe. And I was like, great. Oh, he's over this. Whatever. He's like, actually, <laughs> do you want to come do something with um, all of like the teammates? And I was like, yeah, this is fun. Cool. He's like, meet me at this address. And what he didn't tell me is I showed up and I was like the only girl. It was the entire football team paintballing. He had put me on the opposing team of him with nothing but linebackers and just shot me for like well, two hours. All right. the, an, another complicated Sniped factor me. that her ex-boyfriend was also there. So I went like Mel Gibson, Patriot style, just, you know, <laughs> full on savage to both in, of them. And I, you're in, I had to break the news to him that one of my ex-boyfriends was his teammate and they didn't like we hadn't told him yet. We were early on in dating and that was why. And he put me on my ex-boyfriend's team. I dominated Jordan. And then just I took care of business. But oh, I believe you, say? you. I believe you. You're a natural athlete. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. I'm not a nat natural athlete, so we, we should definitely play together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Dude, does it hurt, Sean? It hurts so bad. Yeah. That's what I've heard. I don't know. The adrenaline takes over, though, for sure. That's yeah. true. That's true. 100%. Andrew, what's the heart behind the competition a month? You know, what was the spur of the moment that started that? It's cool. How old are you? Uh, 30, 32. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm 30. So like, I? well, okay. You reach this point in life, by the way, this is the coldest intro we've ever done to a podcast. We're just, <laughs> we're just ripping it, rolling into it. I don't know where we'll start the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. how it's going. Um, so like every four years of your life, you're used to like transitioning phases, learning something new kind of thing. So it's like middle school, to high school, high school to college, college, like your first job. Then you like transition to something new. And like, I don't know, I'm 31. I feel like I've been chugging along here. My football career is done. I'm like, I got to have something to like look forward to and to challenge me and to like, it's like a turn of a page kind of thing. So are you so, only going to give yourself a month to train for each, <clears throat> each competition? 
Yeah, no, no, no. The point. The p- that doesn't seem smart. One of my skill sets is having no shame. So like, I'm not here to win. I just want to. So like, you, are you ever watch um, Pumping Iron with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jordan? Uh, I think I've seen it. It was a couple of years ago, but I know what you're talking about. I think it's one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. But I'm not even kidding. It's ridiculous. Don't get me wrong. Is but body bodybuilding, I have, I don't understand it at all. It's like. I just kind of think it's weird. So the whole thing is also an empathy building exercise. So like dive into something like I might do a bodybuilding contest just no, so I not. can. No, you're not. Just so I can learn about <laughs> it and then hopefully grow appreciation. But it's like. No. Yeah. No, I, I. Hey, listen, they might not get this, but I totally am vibing <laughs> with what you're saying. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like I feel, I feel like you get into he like really dives into something like pretty much like every six yeah. weeks and he becomes like upset like okay remember you went through that that oh hip-hop oh my gosh he got into y'all like i love my husband so much but he's not good at dancing yeah like, but i like, love no i love rhythm. dance like not dance movies like don't show me ballet movies like break like, dancing step movies. up yes step to absolutely like, step up two. not step up one step up one's lame <laughs> step up two step up three uh you know they're all good but yeah so so when we first got married um he didn't tell me where he was going but he'd just be like gone for a couple hours come to find out he was taking like one-on-one private hip-hop <laughs> lessons and then it was so cute because like i think your guy wanted for you to have like a recital or something <laughs> wow then, oh, a battle babe a battle, a battle. okay and then, and then it was like the cutest thing because after six weeks he showed me what he was learning. I didn't tell her. I I, she, I would just be like, oh, I'm gonna like I'm gonna go out. This was before we had kids. And, just no uh, shame, no shame at all. Yeah. But he showed me what he was learning. It was literally like a sidestep. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so. It wasn't like any tricks or anything. It was just like literally like the. Mo- and it was so cute. But like that's what. Or remember that phase you got really into like puzzles. Puzzles. Yeah. Puzzles was a really big 100%. one for for a while. Wow. Yeah. But, Point being, listen, you go figure out go-kart, man. And maybe yeah. it's not your thing. Hip hop wasn't my thing. It happened way cooler in my head than it did <laughs> in reality. But like uh I'm crazy. I'm behind you on this new journey, Andrew. Do we have videos of you dancing, Jordan? No, no. They're all destroyed. One hundred percent. Danny's like, no. We we talked to another couple you remember Missy Franklin? She was like a swimmer in the Olympics. She wasn't like a swimmer. She was one of the most iconic swimmers. Of all time. All right. <laughs> Not me the down player. But her her husband like says, I'm a dancer. Like Yeah. That's what he I, can dance. But that's not his job. Like that's his hobby. And I was like, I've I very rarely meet people that say that. So I need yeah. what do you mean? Like show me. I like yeah. I need a video. But yeah, anyway. yeah. Yeah, no, it never worked out. It was one of those hobbies that definitely uh faded. But it did fade. Faded. Pretty what are you late. into, Danny? I really like playing tennis. I feel like right now we just don't have time. You know, I love, um, I was actually on a competitive country Western swing dance team. Wow. Seriously? Yeah. Uh, my high school, you know, growing up, in te- growing up in Texas, there were like four or five high schools that had country Western swing. It's, it's basically like cheerleading in a sense of like all the stunts and like, yeah. but it's easier. Cause you also have like all these, it's, it was basically all the football players in yeah. high school or in college, you know, that just like throw the girls around. Um, but it's so fun because dancing, like that type of dance is something that you can do forever. Like if you yeah. ever go to like a honky tonk and you see these cute couples in their seventies still dancing, it's so sweet. So I like that. I like to run, I like to read. And then, yeah, we're basically just like creating content 24 seven, which y'all are too. I don't know how y'all do it. I mean, so is your every day, like, are y'all together just like, tied at the hip all day long yes yeah we've we've tried to like learn how to give each other space especially with our business and I feel like you guys are similar so I'm curious how you would answer that but the more our business grows the less capabilities we both have Mm -hmm. yeah so we've really learned that with every like stage of growth we kind of have to like give each other more and more space to just go off and do their roles which actually has given us more space apart which has been nice <laughs> yeah. i, so, I kind of like spinning every second no you here. don't <laughs> so, yeah, no I you can't. don't <laughs> no. but yeah we work together live together parent together married everything we've developed our company company together 
spend every waking second we get together. along pretty well like we, no, we talk about we argue a lot but like we do with all the time we spend together it's amazing we don't argue more you know? yeah how do you guys balance like the the company owners hats with parenting hats with marriage hats like do you what's your strategy there we're like, <laughs> work in progress. yeah, like we're still figuring it out. But I think too, what really helps is we are very different. And I think we really respect each other's strengths. So we're not like, I know what Jordan is really good at. So I kind of let him do his thing and he knows what I'm really good at. Yeah. Um, but like you said, like we, we work really well together. I know it's not like great for every couple, um, but it's like, even working, I feel like can turn into like a lifestyle or it's like a hobby. Like you don't even feel like you're working sometimes when you're with your spouse. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What would you say? I would say like before we had kids, like, you know, I didn't really describe what we did as a job. I described it as like a lifestyle. It's like, you know, we're living and kind of like experiencing all these really cool things and our, you know, job or lifestyle is to like document that. Right. And it was really fun. I would say that the biggest challenge we've had the past, you know, two or so years is just adding kids to the mix and then just kind of like recalibrating like what, you know, we, what we want this lifestyle to look like with kids, you know, like, you know, you know, is Stella wanting to be on camera, you know, and they're really young right now. So I don't think that they understand, but as they grow older, like what do those boundaries need to look like? And then the other thing that's just really complicated, you know, the original workflow uh, of balance was like, we launched Divi, which kind of, you know, grew really fast. And so I sort of became the de facto CEO of Divi while Danny was still more on the content side. So we're sort of in this like transition phase, it feels like, right? Oh yeah. Um, no, and it's, I think what's been so great about, you know, diversifying and not just creating content every day is like, because if, if our kids don't want to be on camera or if we don't feel comfortable sharing something, like we have a backup plan kind of, we have something yeah. else that we're working on. And so that way we can like set that boundary and just share what we want to share and not have to share like everything about our lives. Cause before we got married or when we were first married before kids, we shared everything. It was like, yeah, because you know, you're just responsible for like uh, me, Jordan and like our marriage, but now with our kids, you know, we're just trying to figure it out. Um, but I don't know. I, like I said, I just think that because we're so different, I'm more of like the creative, like more vision. Like I see, and Jordan's more like, okay, structured, like let's knock these things out. And like you said, like more like the CEO role, yeah. it, it just, our dynamic kind of works. And but the, the, probably the biggest challenge in like balancing those two skill sets was like, you know, leaving room for Danny to be creative. I don't know if you guys run into this as like content creators, but like there's gotta be moments where like, Sean, you have like this vision for what something wants to look at, look like. And Andrew, you have this totally different vision. And just like, I've had to learn to kind of leave room to like not control everything. And sometimes just like kind of just be, live life. Yeah, just live life <laughs> and be like, hey, like Danny, like this is your vision. Like, how can I be best supportive in that and give up my control? you know, factor in that. And so that's been a big learning curve. I feel like we've gotten oh, better yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh -huh. like, at first it was like on the schedule, it was like three to four, like create a reel. And then, you know, three o'clock rolls where I'm like, I don't feel like it. I don't want to <laughs> fake it. Like on camera, I can't just, you know, I have to like have this feeling. So yeah, just having that flexibility and that time to kind of figure things out and go with the flow. That was kind of hard for Jordan at first, but yeah. yeah. What about like That's one of our biggest mistakes or hard challenges that we always face is like, we'll schedule it each day of like, you have to create something here and you get to the point where you're like, I can't just create something like yes. you can't do it out of thin air and usually gets pushed a few days <laughs> or develops naturally or whatever. But I totally, I totally get that. And like some of the, I think what's so fun about our lifestyle or like about our jobs too, is that like we can create that flexibility. Like we are in control if we want to like, just take a couple of hours off and go take the kids to the park or a trampoline park. Like we can, but just giving ourselves that grace to like make those moves is, I think it can be kind of hard sometimes because you're just wanting to stick to the schedule. Yeah. But I'm like, what's the point if we're just working 24 seven and not able to like hang out on the weekends or just like enjoy ourselves. And so. Within your guys' business and your roles, does one of you have like a final say or like how do you guys get through a disagreement when it comes to a business decision? Sure. Tell them about red, yellow, green. Okay, so 
Um, what we have learned that kind of works for us and not just in business, but even like decisions, like we just built a pool in our backyard, like big decisions like that. Um, we actually shared this on, I think our first episode podcast, something we do, it's called red, yellow, green. And whenever we're making these big decisions or, you know, we're creating like a big piece of content, we it's red means that like, I don't, I don't have any opinion with this decision. Like Jordan can take, like, if it's designing the pool, Jordan can design the whole pool. I don't want to be involved in any meeting. Just go for it. Do your thing. Don't even ask me any questions. Yellow is like, okay, like I kind of want to be involved. Like, just like, let me kind of approve the final plan. Um, but I don't need to be involved in the weeds. Green is like, I want to be a part of every single decision um, and every single post that's made. We learned this because we did a influencer trip with Divi. We went to Cabo and um, we were not aligned like creatively of like the reels that we're going to post, the Instagram stories we're going to post. Um, anything and so we were both trying to like be in control and things started getting posted on my instagram that like i did not want on there or things were being missed and we were just like jordan was like kind of in like mr independent mode and was like just posting things you know and so we behind the scenes fought a lot on that trip and we also had like i mean how many different how many people were on that trip like 10 or 12 yeah we had like our whole team we had like yeah we had not six couples it was, and y'all know it was how nice. it probably is like you don't want to fight in front of like your employees because that's not professional so you kind of just have to put on this like happy face and then we also had these um amazing influencers and don't get me wrong like we really did take care of people but it was hard to to fake it you know and so we learned from that trip, like Jordan didn't understand that I wanted to be involved in every single decision. And he thought that he was doing me justice and doing like the business justice by just taking control, you know, and he thought it was like helping. But I was like, this was my idea to go on this trip. And like, I have, you know, I want to have say in what's going live too. So we learned from that trip, we do red, yellow, green, like how involved do you want to be on these decisions? Jordan and his brother have like, they do some like real estate stuff on the side. Um, they like buy homes and like lease them out. Yeah. And that for me is a red because I get too like emotionally invested in all of these properties. And I'm like, but does it have a closet? It does. And it just like takes so much time for me um, and too much energy. So I'm like, okay, you and your brother, like, I trust you guys. I'm red on that. You do your thing, you know? So we kind of, it's just like trial and error and figuring those things out. But I feel like communicating like that has helped us a lot. Yeah. Do you find that uh, the ratio of greens is equal between you guys or is one, is one person always like, I always want to be involved Um, or is it a situation where there's like a lot of mutual yellows or. I would say for, um, I mean, I think it's kind of like 50, 50. Yeah. I, I would say it's gotten to be 50, 50. I think that we had to go through growing pains just as like professionals, I guess you would say like with our teams and just realizing that in order to grow, you know, especially we learned this lesson at Divi, you know, which has like a team of 20 at this point, like we just had to learn that we have to trust other people to run things. Um, and so I think it was like a lesson in letting go of control. And so we're more yellows on, you know, a lot of things than we used to be. Um, and just trust the people beneath you and then also just trust each other. Yeah. And of course you have like your babies, like it's like your greens, your greens. Like it's like my, my Instagram and like our social shirt. I'm like, I'm green on everything. I'm like, I'm like neon green. I'm like, don't post anything without me. (laughs) Um, but then it's like, I can't be green on every single thing. And so giving up that control can be kind of hard, but then it just like frees up, it frees up time. Like, like I said, like for your weekends to go play paintball, to go play tennis, like whatever it is. I was reminded of this statistic the other day and wanted to share it with you all. Did you know one out of six couples struggle with infertility? Wow. Seriously, that's a staggering statistic that most people don't know or aren't ready to talk about, which is why we need good data and information about our bodies in order to have informed conversations with our doctor. I feel like a lot of people tend to overlook that, and it's honestly so important to talk about, especially when thinking about planning for a family. It really is, but that's why Modern Fertility was created. It's an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. Mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results within 10 days. You'll get insight into your hormone levels, your ovarian reserve, aka how many eggs you have, compared to other women your age, 
and other important fertility factors. Traditional testing can cost over $600, but Modern Fertility gets you the same information at a fraction of the price. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash eastfam30, you can get $30 off your test. Plus, you can get reimbursed for the test through your FSA or HSA. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $30 off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash eastfam30. This is a limited time offer for $30 off. That means your test will cost $169 instead of the hundreds or thousands it could cost at a doctor's office. Get $30 off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash eastfam30. Again, that's modernfertility.com slash eastfam30. Let's get back to it. Can you tell us the story of how Divi got started? I was trying to explain this to Andrew the other day because I have followed you from the very beginning. Really? Oh, oh. yes. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, when we, so I actually started losing my hair, like in college, I was, I started my YouTube channel when I was in college. Um, I went to the university of Texas in Austin. We both did. And, you know, I was in a sorority, I was doing young life at the time. And then I was also like signed to a manager in LA, you know, creating content. And, um, it was just so so much on my plate and so i was like just always stressed so i started like picking my hair out like i'd be studying and there would just be like all this hair on my desk so um fast forward a little bit you know tried to cover it up with like hair extensions or bleaching my hair whatever it was met jordan got married um and then it got to a point where like i remember one day when we were married i like looked in the mirror and i was like jordan i have no more hair like i don't even want to leave the house i was kind of so embarrassed so Jordan, of course, like just being a typical dude was like, well, I don't get it. Like the Kardashians wear wigs. So like, why can't you wear a wig? And I'm like, <laughs> Jordan, like I can't wear a wig because I'm not the Kardashians. <laughs> so he started like doing some. Do research. they actually wear wigs? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Like a ton of I celebrities know. wear wigs. You wouldn't even believe. Um, I'm so, shook. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yes. crazy. Like, and now because I've worn wigs, like I can, I know, like yeah. I can tell, but anyway, um, wow. so he took me to like, he Googled like wig shop, Dallas, you know, took me to the first wig shop. It was like a Halloween store. Like they had like the plastic, like $10 neon blue wigs. And I'm like, I show up there and I'm like, I'm always going to be like, have no hair, be bald. <laughs> um, so fast forward, we did some more research. We ended up flying out to LA yeah. because there were like no wigs in Dallas. Um, and when I say wig, like the good ones, you know, that yeah. don't look like they're like plastic. And if there were wigs in Dallas, they're like, wigs are like two to five grand. Like they're, the good ones are so expensive. So I went out to LA, got my first wig, named her Kim. Kim, I remember her. Kim. Named her Kim. <laughs> yeah, you know what's so funny though, um, because I went from hair extensions to wigs. No, no one could tell. Like, yeah, no one knew. I wore them for a month and didn't tell anyone. We went to Chicago with my parents and my brother and now sister-in-law, and we I wore like, it the hey, entire time. Let's not say anything and let's see if they know. And they were just like, "Oh, Danny, love your new haircut." <laughs> so crazy. Wow. Um, so basically I took a year where I just like really focused on my lifestyle, overall wellness, working out, eating right, started working on like my scalp health and started kind of creating like my own, um, scalp serum essentially that could like help my hair grow back, had lots of like amino acids and peptides kind of like detoxify your scalp. Cause like a, another big thing, um, which I don't know if you use dry shampoo, Sean, but like, a, that's like a big a product that a lot of women use, but it like sits on your scalp and actually like clogs the follicle where your hair cannot really grow anymore. It's kind of like having like a blackhead or something. Um, so just started kind of working on my own formulas and, um, you know, just through my Instagram stories, I had connected with a lot of women that were going through something similar and they just started asking me, Hey, can you send this to me? Can you, can you create this? Like, can you actually make this a thing? And so, but it was um, like it, it was like in a petri dish in our bathroom. We're like, hey, that's probably not smart. Yeah. To send people back. <laughs> so we ended up um, like finding a chemist to work with and like really great partners and just launched Divi. Like it would, the first product was just a scalp serum. Thought that like that would be it. You know, move on with our lives. Um, but it was just crazy. Like, you know, it worked for me, and I always like like I always believed in it, but it wasn't until people started sending me like before and afters or like posting on their own Instagram or sending it to their neighbor down the street that I was like, oh my gosh, this is 
really a thing. And I think because of a lot of the really good ingredients in it, it helped a lot of people with like dandruff, psoriasis, um, itchy scalp, whatever it was. Um, so it kind of just like has grown and we ended up launching like shampoo conditioner. We're launching our vit- our hair vitamin next week. Um, so it was very like organic, like I never did, you know, I, I never thought I would like have a hair care company cause I, I wasn't born with like great hair, you know, like it's, mm-hmm. but I think it's more so like I'm taking something that I'm like that I needed the most. And I think a lot of people relate with that. Cause you see a lot of girls that like launch hair care brands that have gorgeous hair and it's like girl you're just born with that like that's yeah. just that's just genetics right there and so um uh, so i think a lot of people kind of like resonated and related to the product um so yeah we're uh that's what we kind of do on the side it's been fun wow i i was telling him all of this i truly i remember finding you or being served you up on a platter by an algorithm at some point it was around the time where you started with your wigs and i followed your journey the entire way and I was so mesmerized by one your vulnerability but just like your whole journey and your process and I remember being so happy as a follower when like you would make progress I was like oh my gosh this is so exciting um so I remember being there along with you but um I'm curious your guys's companies have like taken off uh you are massive influencers you have Divi now that has taken over everything you see it everywhere um with bigger businesses comes more eyes, more scrutiny, everything like that. Two-part question. How do you support each other through that? Because more and more eyes is just harder, especially with babies. And the whole world of cancel culture, does it ever, like, scare you to the point of not wanting to be in this world? Like, within the social media world. Yeah. Yeah. You do the first question, I'll do the second. Um, yeah, so the first question is just, like, Sorry, ask the first question one more time. How do, we how do you support, how do you support each other? other? Oh, yeah. So I have learned, uh, you know, a lot through that. I think that um, for me personally, like supporting Danny, you know, I always feel like I'm like a supporting character to like the content, if that makes sense. I, I'm sure, Andrew, I don't know if you feel the same way or you have your own social, like it's way bigger than mine. I don't even post, but, uh, you post, know, it, it's been uh, <laughs> like as we... Um, as we've had kids, it's been easier for me to kind of take a step back and be a little bit outside of the internet um, because, you know, the internet and real life are two totally different things. Like you go onto like Twitter for five minutes, you're like, this is not reality. <laughs> like it is just a battleground there. And so um, it's been helpful for me to take a step back and be kind of like the calming, hey, I know this feels really personal to you, Danny, and it feels like you're being attacked, but here's where you're doing things right. You know, here's where mm-hmm. maybe like we could do things a little bit better and just be that grounding force. Um, mm-hmm. There was a time where we were both so invested because we were trying to figure out what this thing was like 2017, 2018, 2019, you know, I had switched from my job to jump into this. And so we were both just very invested in it. And I think that having Divi has helped like take a step back a little bit and just mm-hmm. keep things grounded, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I mean, and to the second part of your question, cancel culture. I mean, we've been canceled <laughs> so many times. And um, <laughs> at least five and a half times. Like, <laughs> I'm probably being canceled right now. And I don't even know. Like <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, we were actually canceled like before I think the word cancel culture was even a True. thing. We were kind of pioneers. Yeah, we, we kind of yeah, wow. we kind of like paved the way for <laughs> for a lot of you guys. Um <laughs> So, you know, I think that um, it definitely, it's always hard. Like, and I want to be that person so badly. That's like, I don't care. Like I'm, I know it, but it's just, I'm, I'm human and I'm actually pretty sensitive. And so something that helped, that's helped a lot. Actually, when we, when we got married, do you remember like, we, I don't know if it was like a part of our public vows, but we vowed to each other that we would like never read like hate pages, like the gossip forums, like any of those new uh, websites that are coming out. Because when we were reading those, when we were dating, it really affected our relationship. And we we're spending too much energy on, honestly, this things that weren't even really valid or true. Um, and so that's helped a lot. We've just like set those boundaries. It's almost like, like even whenever we post something, a lot of times like we're, we engage for 10 minutes. Okay. And then we're done. Like, let's stop reading comments. Let's stop reading DMs. There's like a time and a place for it, but 
having those boundaries is is really important but does it ever scare me to the point like I feel like I would want to quit I definitely go through like weaknesses where I'm like okay I need to take a break and I have taken breaks like right now um I post on TikTok but I'm not like consuming a lot of TikTok I'm not reading comments like that's I don't think it'll always be like that but like I just felt like that was best for like my mental health and like where we're at right now yeah um but I also feel like I don't think it'll ever like stop me from doing what I'm doing because I, I know deep down like where our hearts are at or like I feel really good about what we're creating. And um, so, yeah, I don't I think if I ever like did something like really, really wrong, maybe I would question like maybe taking a couple of years off. But I I I'm confident in like the fact that we're always trying to like better ourselves. We're creating content where we like genuinely care about people and, you know, we feel like a purpose in what we're doing. So, so no, I don't think that we'll ever quit, yeah. you know, I, we'll I, we call ourselves the cockroaches. Yeah, some, some people are watching <laughs> and like, oh, we'll make her quit tomorrow. Yeah. And they just like come right after us. We're like, I'm yeah. always like, we're a cockroach. Like you can't, yeah. you can't stop us. I always oscillate between like re reputation matters for sure. But it's like, it also in comparison to when you're on, when you're on like a mission and you're like, mm -hmm. Hey, I I'm doing this for like a strong purpose. The reputation, like the reputation is insignificant in comparison mm -hmm. to that. So like, I, I think it helps in maybe achieving your purpose, but it's also like not the end goal is to like, it's not to be the nice guy. It's like, no, hey, it's, not they, to it's not to please everyone. Yeah. We live in a, such an evil world where that's literally impossible. I also, do you guys know, uh, the Holcombs, the Drew Holcomb is like mm. a musician and his oh, wife. Yeah. Ellie. Was yeah. he they're... Penny's Drew? No, 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 oh. that's not Penny's oh, Drew. Okay, but sorry, I don't know. Drew, <laughs> Drew, and, uh, Drew and Ellie Holcomb, Drew, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they're amazing singer-songwriters. Yeah. Super good. Yeah, they, they shared something that has really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. He said the human heart is not meant for fame. Like when you think yeah. about, one, uh, the effect that knowing about all the tragedies that are happening in the world just today. Yeah. Like it's almost hard for like the heart and the mind to, to cope with that. It's like, it's too much tragedy. Right. But also all the feedback that you're getting yeah. from millions of people, uh, it's just, you're not, you're not like really built for it. And I think that's a, that's the beautiful and tender thing about marriage where it's really the person that knows you the best. Right. Mm -hmm. And so their criticism really carries the most weight. Uh, they can it, like it can sting the most, but also like along with that comes the responsibility of knowing like, hey, this person trusts you to give um, meaningful feedback. Like, hey, Sean, you know, I, I know that the Internet's saying X, Y, Z, but here's my take on it. Having spent 24 hours a day with you for the last seven years of our life, like I have a way better perspective than you know, whoever on the internet, but I feel like the, I feel like we, our businesses have been the most blessed whenever our relationship with like that is all intact. You know, I feel like the, the seasons that have been the hardest is when we kind of let both habits and like hearts slip into, you know, hearing the feedback loop of what comes through DMS like too much and latching onto it. But, you know, when we, kind of call it what it is, which is more of a purpose slash responsibility, but it's not really like for us or ours. You know, it just feels like those have been the seasons where our marriage is firing on all cylinders, like we're doing well as parents, like our business is successful. And so it's all just about perspective. But, you know, the entertainment industry as a whole is such a trap for so many people. And so I think it's like you don't see a lot of people come out of it um, humble themselves, you know, like uh, good, <laughs> you know, yeah. they, like it kind of corrupts people a, a lot of the times. And so, you know, it's, it's, it takes a lot of effort to remain true to who you are and like, you know, your, especially your faith perspective in all of this as well. But yeah, no, and it's funny that you say that. Cause I'm always like, babe, like I'm not, we're not meant to be worshiped. Like there's no way I can, like, none of us can handle that. I was actually even, I've seen Taylor Swift. I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan. And I went to her concert 
the first night in Dallas and like just seeing these girls like go wild over like there was like a moment where it kind of made my stomach do like a flip-flop where I was like this is like kind of scary and it's like kind of um not not sad but like it's it's scary because Taylor's getting all this attention it's like does she even really like know the truth anymore because it can sometimes like fame or all this attention can kind of um, convolute the truth or make it like harder to find. Um, and so I remember like, I turned to one of my friends, I'm like, okay, wait, is this, and there was a point in her show where she's like, man, I just feel so powerful. And it's like that, that type of attention can, can probably give you too much power to where, um, if you're not like responsible with it, it can turn into something kind of scary. Um, but yeah, I think like what you're saying, even about, um, reminding each other of the truth and having people around you that really know you. I think that like when I have been canceled in the past and like things just feel like, and, and your reputation is maybe being destroyed and it can feel like the world is just, you know, everybody hates you. I think my first inclination obviously is to go to Jordan. And then it's also just to like go to my friends in my community, like the people that really know me. And the first thing I do is I text it to them. I'm like, okay, can can we all get together? And then you're with them and you're like, this is all that matters. These are people that actually know me and that love me. And they'll speak into me if I did something wrong and they'll tell me um, because they hold me accountable like that. But like, those are the people that I need to like really be listening to, not these people on the internet just maybe mm -hmm. don't really know you, you know? Yeah. Like, and last thing I'll say on this is like the craziest thing about it's so like such a stretch to say we've been canceled. We joke about it, but it's like, you, you know what I mean? It just kind of like comes in storms, but like, it's been wild because we could probably look back at every single one of those situations where we thought, oh my gosh, like the world hates us or these, this group of people, usually a small group of people hate us and they're very loud about it. And, uh, we can look back at every single one of those circumstances now in retrospect and be like, man, like that was what God was doing in that situation. Or like, here's what reconciliation looked like. And, um, you know, so many people that we feel wronged us, or we felt wronged by in those situations, like we've forgiven. And there's just so much power in that, you know, and it's like brought us like closer together as a team. It's like, reinforced our mission and our purpose of like you know hey it's not always going to be easy there's going to be desert seasons but um yeah it's just it's just wild it's mm -hmm. it's a wild internet out there <laughs> um i had a question can i ask some question yeah um i had a question for you guys it's kind of like a yeah. interesting question but like you know like as believers you know with everything that you're saying and like this being like a, a dark world you know and in social media not all being good like how have you guys like a, approached social media like as a mission or a purpose if that makes sense um <clears throat> we it's gone through like ebbs and flows i feel like we've used social media for different purposes throughout the years and i feel like it's kind of all come to a head when we got to a point with kids where we were like we have to be doing something for good because we have to be able to teach our kids why we're doing this. It's not, it can't just be to make money. It can't just be for followers. Like we have to have a good reason. And we ended up launching our network, which was family made, not knowing if it would ever work, not knowing if it would grow, if people would like it. But it was this idea of we love family. And the most impactful thing that has happened to us is building a family. And that has kind of what has changed our our view on all social media and the communities you build and we just wanted to really uplift other families and communities and so with our mission in social media and like our faith and everything I feel like up until probably the past year I'd say more so the past year or two I felt like I had to be very like politically correct and do the trends and do everything and anymore I feel more and more compelled to be like no this is this is what we believe in and like we believe God is good and we believe family is amazing and it's like the hopefully the least polarizing but it is very polarizing to some people but we kind of don't care because it's it's so good and hopefully it can help so many people yeah it can Love feel that. like it can be very freeing to yeah. like just share what you believe and know that not everyone's gonna like it like I always tell people I'm like yeah I'm a flavor and I'm not everyone's flavor and <laughs> yeah. that's okay but 
for me to have longevity on this platform or on any of these platforms, like I have to share what I feel like is important and what it's all, all right. about. What were you doing before this, Jordan? Um, so graduated UT Austin 2013. Uh, was in Austin, like tech scene, joined like a app startup. So it's 2013. So apps were cool and you know, good back then. But um, uh, it sold to a company called Daimler that owns Mercedes Benz. I didn't like, I wasn't like rich after that. So just <laughs> clarifying, I was like, you know, 22 or whatever. Um, and then uh, went to another startup, like a wearable company and was the chief marketing officer there. And that one, didn't succeed. So that failed. And then we kind of like got married and just jumped in. It was like a decision that we made where I pulled him over to this side. Yeah. I was very resistant to it. I mean, I really felt like I had a career path for myself and like, I wanted this and um, it just, you know, it was a weird dynamic when like I would be sitting in like a corporate meeting and Danny's like, Hey, I just got invited to Europe they gave me a plus one, you want to come. And so I just, we just started very immediately seeing like, Hey, there's this like once in a lifetime opportunity to build our lives like this. And uh, it took me a while. I, I won't say it was easy, but I jumped over and uh, you know, this show is brought to you by better help. BetterHelp is a trusted brand that has been in our life for several years. If you've been listening to our podcast for a while, you know we're big fans of using therapy to strengthen our relationship as well as ourselves individually. Being a wife and a mom, sometimes it's easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and not take a few minutes to focus on yourself. But if I don't take that time, I can feel so burnt out and stretched thin. It's so nice having an outlet to talk to a professional and therapy helps you learn the tools to have more balance in your life so you can show up for your family as the best version of yourself. You've been doing a good job with that, babe. I appreciate that. And I agree with what you're saying. And if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, we highly recommend BetterHelp. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with the licensed therapist. And you can also switch therapists anytime for no additional charge to make sure it's a right fit for you. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can help you get there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash EastFam today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash EastFam. We'll also link it down below. Let's get back to it. I, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I saw, you know, I was not, had I not met Sean, this would not be my life at all, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> And I think everyone probably generally in marriage would say that, but with Sean having turned professional as a gymnast at age 12 and then she's on all these shows and then like walking into that and being a, having a front row seat to like, to whatever degree she's famous has been so fascinating. And I think like fame is often misused. I think there is, one good benefit from it and that's like people automatically feel connected to you and it's like the 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 impulse to approach you on the street is there and it's like hey so what do you do with that is it like a no i'm too good for you and not right now like you're wasting my time or is it hey you know I, we might be going to lunch and we might have 30 seconds but what's your name and i'm sean it's good to meet you yeah. um so but anyway to to answer your question about social media, I think my goal with it, the only way I feel comfortable sharing on social media is to harness whatever attention we get and like try to deflect that towards meaningful like sources. Right. So whether that be like people ask you, I'm sure, Hey, how'd you sleep, whatever, sleep train your baby or how did you, what did you eat during pregnancy or how are you guys working together? And it's like, you really don't want my advice on that. I'm not qualified. I'm not going to give you any meaningful advice. So it's like, but we do know this person who does this full time or like even products where it's like, you know, that with kids, one, one right thing can like yeah. change the game for you. So it's like that, <laughs> or, you know, I, and I think it's, increase the responsibility of me also knowing that you could go two routes with it. One, like just continually read all the comments about Andrew. Yeah. Wow. You seem like such a great dad or like, wow, you seem like so fun or <laughs> which is sucks. All right. Cause then you read the bad one and you're like, Oh, 
great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hitched my carriage to the wrong thing, but it's like, it's really, uh, increased my urgency to like go to sources of wisdom myself and like read more books and like read the Bible more and like do all these and like making sure that my house is in order before I start sharing all my dirty laundry, you know? But anyway. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So true. Totally. Do y'all yeah. read, do you read your comments? Like how much are y'all like in on the, the communication with your, your audience? You read more comments than I do. I read more comments than he does. I, it's really hard for me because I don't ever want to read them to like self-indulge or like, yeah, you know, read the things that I don't like. And I, I just don't want that feeling, but I do think it's a responsibility within like what we're doing to make sure people are receiving things well. And I never allow things within our comments that I wouldn't want our kids to read. So I, I try to screen things or at least diffuse things that are happening that I, I don't think are acceptable within our our platforms. I have a different opinion on this. But, babe, they did that thing where they switched the interview. They asked us the question. I know they did. And it's, <laughs> but you, I mean, like, yeah. it's so interesting, though. Like, we're, we're, it's, whenever you meet someone in our yeah. industry, like, we're all in the same boat. We're all figuring it out. Like, I'm, so I'm just, genuinely curious because yeah. I'm, I'm, like, trying to figure out. But it, it's the same thing even with the comments. It's like... I love being in the comments or the Same. DMs mainly because like, I love connecting with people. I love having those conversations. Same. Um, but like all it takes is like one bad conversation for me to like feel bad for like the next two hours. So it's like, where is like, is that healthy or is it not? But it's, but I agree with you. Like it is important to kind of nurture that community, screen everything, um, connect with people, make sure that everything is being received well. Um, mm. I, yeah. I will say though, I am a hundred percent in a phase where I'm not reading anything. I, I feel like I'm more sensitive at the moment in reading things. I kind of, people went through a wave there where they were just not nice. And I feel like I was seeing evil in the world and I just had to go read the Bible more. I was like, please let's turn this around. <laughs> yeah. I always joke with people that I feel like, you know, if anyone ever wants just sort of a pulse on the mental health of America, just call yes. me because we can always see it. You know. Right in the DMs. You I'm truly like, oh, can. Bad, day. bad day for America. Like let's let's not do this. You know? And so it's it's so it really true. is you feel the weight of, you know, the, the mental Some days health when they're, they're just angry, I'm just like, I'm not I'm not gonna be here today. Exactly. I just take the day off. I'm like, I'm just it's not even worth it. Like yeah. that's how I feel about Twitter every day to your earlier <laughs> yeah. point. Bro, Twitter is so gnarly. Oh it's crazy. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. I, I build lists for myself. I don't do the whole like uh like the there's just the open feed thing. I just build lists like I have a different list for different interesting things. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah Twitter's, a, Twitter's a cesspool. Don't don't that and Reddit just stay off of it. <laughs> All right. So we've talked about Divi. Um and I know we're running out of time here, but yeah. you also just launched a podcast yourself, The Influence. Tell us about it. Yeah. Um so that was kind of my initiative to have to share things that are in longer form. I don't know if you feel this way, but there's on Instagram, it's like you don't have enough time to really dive in. And then if you do say something, it can be taken out of perspective or out of, uh, context, out of yeah. context. Um, or, you know, it can just be like a screenshot or whatever it is. So I felt like with a podcast, we could really dive into some of the topics that we wanted to talk more about. So um, call it de-influence just because I'm kind of like de-influencing myself, de-influencing kind of the industry, um, kind of stripping it down. And um, yeah, to be honest, it was, we've had like about six or seven episodes and it's a totally different game. I mean, y'all know it's, it's so much work, but I've really enjoyed it. Um, and I've just, now we're working on like having different guests and, um, for now the first six or seven episodes have just really been, um, sharing like what my audience has asked most about, which is, you know, marriage working together, um, hate online, how we balance our career, um, offline and online parenting, things like that. And so now I'm excited to have guests and kind of like dive a little bit deeper. I think podcast is like my favorite thing we, we've ever done. Mm-hmm. Really, I think it's it's the first time on like social platforms you feel like you're actually connecting. 
Yeah. Yes. And it's not like sound bites like you were saying, and you don't have 15 seconds to get the word, like the idea across. You can actually like be human, <laughs> which is great. Be human and, and give yourself like the grace to learn things and not be stuck. Like, I feel like my, um, you know, once you post something on Instagram, people like will always, say, Oh, but you said this one thing and like hold you account. But I feel like on a podcast, you can learn and have opinions and, and change and grow. Yeah, there's like room for nuance, like within podcasts is longer form, you know, people always be like, well, are you going to address this? Or why don't you talk about this? And it's like, because we have 15 second clips to do it. And it's like weird if we, do it, you know, and so it's like just easier to talk about things in this medium. Right. Feels like. Your whole like intro announcement reel for that was epic. Dan. It was with the pink background and yes. the chair and the, it was great. So well done. Thanks guys. We had no idea what, what we were getting into, but, um, <laughs> well, I will say I saw you guys post on Instagram today and I'm honored to be part of the top three couples oh, to yeah. be friends with you guys. That's why we're interviewing you. You guys are freaking cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would love to be friends. Can yeah. we please be friends and stay in touch? Come to Nashville, go paintballing and yeah, let's please keep in touch. Thank you so much for being, um, on our show today. We're huge fans. Thanks for having us. We're huge fans too. And we will definitely hit you up when I'm trying to set my brother up in Nashville next time. Yeah. We'll be Let's there. Go. Wait, how old is he? 20. He's 34. Uh, we got single girlfriends. Yeah, my opinion is. No, okay. no, you Sorry. get it. He's a great guy. <laughs> okay. He's a great guy. The thing is, is I, I think that for Landon, it was just like, it's the right timing now. You know, I think he's ready. He just bought a house, like huge house. I think it's like five bedrooms and he's living there by himself. So wait, is Landon the one that you did the bachelor with on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's that's she literally like run, we did a whole bachelor series on her Instagram for him. I think it's twice. 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 <laughs> what are we doing here? No, and they've been the most amazing girls. Um, I thought, yeah, I, I, won't, I won't get into yeah. the nitty gritty, but yes, um, no, no more seasons of that. But if you have any single friends, let me know. Wow. <laughs> we'll just send them over. Yeah. Send them over. I'm so glad we met you guys. Thank you for the time. Yeah. yeah thank thanks, you guys. guys. This has been awesome. We appreciate it. And happy early birthday to your son. Thanks guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye.